Idi Amin Dada was the third president of Uganda, ruling from 1971 to 1979. Amin joined the British colonial regiment, the King's African Rifles in 1946, serving in Kenya and Uganda. Eventually, Amin held the rank of Major General in the post-colonial Ugandan army and became its commander before seizing power in the military coup of January 1971, deposing Milton Abbott. He later promoted himself to field marshal while he was the head of state. Amin's rule was characterized by human rights abuses, political repression, ethnic persecution, extrajudicial killings, nepotism, corruption, and gross economic mismanagement. The number of people killed as a result of his regime is estimated by international observers and human rights groups to range from 100,000 to 500,000. During his years in power, Amin shifted an allegiance from being a pro-Western ruler enjoying considerable Israeli support to being backed by Libya's Muammar Gaddafi, the Soviet Union, and East Germany. In 1975, Amin became the chairman of the Organization of African Unity, a pan-Africanist group designed to promote solidarity of the African states. During the 1977 Euro 1979 period, Uganda was a member of the United Nations Commission on Human Rights. In 1977, when Britain broke diplomatic relations with Uganda, Amin declared he had defeated the British and added CBE, the conqueror of the British Empire, to his title. Radio Uganda then announced his entire title, His Excellency President for Life, Field Marshal Al Horji Drive Idi Amin Dada, VC, DSO, MC, CBE. Descent within Uganda and Amin's attempt to annex the Kadara province of Tanzania in 1978 led to the Uganda Euro Tanzania War and the demise of his eight year regime, leading Amin to flee into exile to Libya and Saudi Arabia, where he lived until his death on August 16, 2003. Biography Early life Amin never wrote an autobiography nor did he authorize any official written account of his life, so there are discrepancies regarding when and where he was born. Most biographical sources hold that he was born in either Kaboko or Kampala around 1925. Other unconfirmed sources state Amin's year of birth from as early as 1923 to as late as 1928. According to Fred Guideco, a researcher at May Career University, Idi Amin was the son of Andreas Nyab. Nyab, a member of the Korkwa ethnic group, converted from Roman Catholicism to Islam in 1910 and changed his name to Amin Dada. He named his firstborn son after himself. Abandoned by his father at a young age, Idi Amin grew up with his mother's family in a rural farming town in northwestern Uganda. Guideco states that Amin's mother was called Asaat, an ethnic lugborough and a traditional herbalist who treated members of Buganda royalty, among others. Amin joined an Islamic school in Bombo in 1941. After a few years, he left school with nothing more than a fourth-grade English language education and did odd jobs before being recruited to the army by a British colonial army officer. Colonial British Army, Amin joined the King's African Rifles of the British Colonial Army in 1946 as an assistant cook. He claimed he was forced to join the army during World War II and that he served in the Burma campaign but records indicate he was first enlisted after the war was concluded. He was transferred to Kenya for infantry service as a private in 1947 and served in the 21st KAR Infantry Battalion in Gilgil, Kenya until 1949. That year, his unit was deployed to northern Kenya to fight against Somali rebels in the Shifta War. In 1952 his brigade was deployed against the Mau Mau rebels in Kenya. He was promoted to corporal the same year, then to sergeant in 1953. In 1959, Amin was made a fand, the highest rank possible for a black African in the colonial British army of that time. Amin returned to Uganda the same year, and in 1961 he was promoted to lieutenant, becoming one of the first two Ugandans to become commissioned officers. He was assigned to quell the cattle rustling between Uganda's Karamajong and Kenya's Takana nomads. In 1962, following Uganda's independence from the United Kingdom, Amin was promoted to captain and then, in 1963, to major. He was appointed deputy commander of the army the following year. 
Amin was an athlete during his time in both the British and Ugandan army. At 193 cm tall and powerfully built, he was the Ugandan light heavyweight boxing champion from 1951 to 1960, as well as a swimmer. Idi Amin was also a formidable rugby forward, although one officer said of him, Idi Amin is a splendid type and a good player, but virtually bone from the neck up, and needs things explained in words of one letter. In the 1950s, he played for Nile RFC. There is a frequently repeated urban myth that he was selected as a replacement by East Africa for their match against the 1955 British Lions. Armin, however, does not appear on the team photograph or on the official team list, and replacements were not allowed in international rugby until 13 years after this event is supposed to have taken place. Following conversations with a colleague in the British Army, Amin became a keen fan of Hayes Football Club a Euro an affection that would remain for the rest of his life. Army commander, in 1965, Prime Minister Milton Abote and Amin were implicated in a deal to smuggle ivory and gold into Uganda from Zaire. The deal, as later alleged by General Nicholas Olinga, an associate of the former Congolese leader Patrice Lumumba, was part of an arrangement to help troops opposed to the Congolese government trade ivory and gold from supplies secretly smuggled to them by Amin. In 1966, the Ugandan parliament demanded an investigation. A boat imposed a new constitution abolishing the ceremonial presidency held by Kabaka Mutsatu of Buganda, and declared himself executive president. He promoted Amin to colonel and army commander. Amin led an attack on the Kaubaka's palace and forced Muta into exile to the United Kingdom, where he remained until his death in 1969. Amin began recruiting members of Korkwa, Lugbara, South Sudanese, and other ethnic groups from the West Nile area bordering South Sudan. The South Sudanese had been residents in Uganda since the early 20th century, having come from South Sudan to serve the colonial army. Many African ethnic groups in northern Uganda inhabit both Uganda and South Sudan. Allegations persist that Amin's army consisted mainly of South Sudanese soldiers. Seizure of power, eventually, a rift developed between Amin and a boat, exacerbated by the support Amin had built within the army by recruiting from the West Nile region, his involvement in operations to support the rebellion in southern Sudan, and an attempt on a boat's life in 1969. In October 1970, Abot himself took control of the armed forces, reducing Amin from his months old post of commander of all the armed forces to that of commander of the army. Having learned that Abot was planning to arrest him for misappropriating army funds, Amin seized power in a military coup on January 25, 1971, while Abot was attending a Commonwealth summit meeting in Singapore. Troops loyal to Amin sealed off Entebb International Airport, the main airport and took Kampala. Soldiers surrounded a boat's residence and blocked major roads. A broadcast on Radio Uganda accused a boat's government of corruption and preferential treatment of the Lango region. Cheering crowds were reported in the streets of Kampala after the radio broadcast. Amin announced that he was a soldier, not a politician, and that the military government would remain only as a caretaker regime until new elections which would be announced when the situation was normalized. He promised to release all political prisoners. Amin gave former King of Buganda and President, Sir Edward Mutsa, a state funeral in April 1971, freed many political prisoners, and reiterated his promise to hold free and fair elections to return the country to democratic rule in the shortest period possible. Presidency Establishment of Military Rule on February 2, 1971, one week after the coup, Amin declared himself President of Uganda, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Army Chief of Staff, and Chief of Air Staff. He announced that he was suspending certain provisions of the Ugandan constitution and soon instituted an advisory defense council composed of military officers with himself as the chairman. Amin placed military tribunals above the system of civil law, appointed soldiers to top government posts and parastatal agencies, and informed the newly inducted civilian cabinet ministers that they would be subject to military discipline. Amin renamed the presidential lodge in Kampala from Government House to the Command Post. He disbanded the General Service Unit, 
an intelligence agency created by the previous government, and replaced it with the State Research Bureau. SRB headquarters at the Kampala suburb of Nakasara became the scene of torture and executions over the next few years. Other agencies used to persecute dissenters included the military police and the public safety unit. A boat took refuge in Tanzania, having been offered sanctuary there by the Tanzanian president Julius Nyerere. A boat was soon joined by 20,000 Ugandan refugees fleeing Amin. The exiles attempted, and failed, to regain the country in 1972 through a poorly organized coup attempt. Persecution of ethnic and other groups, Amin retaliated against the attempted invasion by Ugandan exiles in 1972 by purging the army of a boat supporters, predominantly those from the Akali and Lango ethnic groups. In July 1971, Lango and Akali soldiers were massacred in the Jinja and Marara barracks, and by early 1972, some 5,000 Akali and Lango soldiers, and at least twice as many civilians, had disappeared. The victims soon came to include members of other ethnic groups, religious leaders, journalists, artists, senior bureaucrats, judges, lawyers, students and intellectuals, criminal suspects, and foreign nationals. In this atmosphere of violence, many other people were killed for criminal motives or simply at will. Bodies were often dumped into the River Nile. The killings, motivated by ethnic, political, and financial factors, continued throughout Armin's eight-year reign. The exact number of people killed is unknown. The International Commission of Jurists estimated the death toll at no fewer than 80,000 and more likely around 300,000. An estimate compiled by exile organizations with the help of Amnesty International puts the number killed at 500,000. Among the most prominent people killed were Benedicto Kaiwanuka, the former Prime Minister and Chief Justice. Janani Luam, the Anglican Archbishop. Joseph Mubiru, the former Governor of the Central Bank. Frank Calamuso, the Vice-Chancellor of Makerere University. Byron Kawadwa, a prominent playwright and two of Armin's own cabinet ministers, Iringo Wilson Raima and Charles Abotho Fumbai. Armin recruited his followers from his own tribe, the Korkwas, along with South Sudanese. By 1977, these three groups formed 60% of the 22 top generals and 75% of the cabinet. Similarly, Muslims formed 80% and 87.5% of these groups even though they were only 5% of the population. This helps explain why Armin survived eight attempted coups. The army grew from 10,000 to 25,000 by 1978. Armin's army was largely a mercenary force. Half the soldiers were South Sudanese, 26% Congolese, only 24% were Ugandan, mostly Muslim and Korkwa. In August 1972, Armin declared what he called an economic war a set of policies that included the expropriation of properties owned by Asians and Europeans. Uganda's 80,000 Asians were mostly from the Indian subcontinent and born in the country, their ancestors having come to Uganda when the country was still a British colony. Many owned businesses, including large-scale enterprises, which formed the backbone of the Ugandan economy. On August 4, 1972, Armin issued a decree ordering the expulsion of the 60,000 Asians who were not Ugandan citizens. This was later amended to include all 80,000 Asians, except for professionals, such as doctors, lawyers, and teachers. A plurality of the Asians with British passports, around 30,000, emigrated to the UK. Others went to Australia, Canada, India, Kenya, Pakistan, Sweden, Tanzania, and the U.S. Armin expropriated businesses and properties belonging to the Asians and handed them over to his supporters. The businesses were mismanaged, and industries collapsed from lack of maintenance. This proved disastrous for the already declining economy. In 1977, Henry Kiemba, Armin's health minister and a former official of the first Abote regime, defected and resettled in the U.K. Kiemba wrote and published A State of Blood the first insider exposer copyright of Armin's rule. International Relations Following the expulsion of Ugandan Asians in 1972, most of whom were of Indian descent, 
India severed diplomatic relations with Uganda. The same year, as part of his economic war, Amin broke diplomatic ties with the UK and nationalized 85 British-owned businesses. That year, relations with Israel soured. Although Israel had previously supplied Uganda with arms, in 1972 Amin expelled Israeli military advisers and turned to Muammar Gaddafi of Libya and the Soviet Union for support. Amin became an outspoken critic of Israel. In return, Gaddafi gave financial aid to Amin. In the 1974 French-produced documentary film General I.D. Amin Dada, a self-portrait, Amin discussed his plans for war against Israel, using paratroops, bombers and suicide squadrons. The Soviet Union became Amin's largest arms supplier. East Germany was involved in the General Service Unit and the State Research Bureau, the two agencies which were most notorious for terror. Later during the Ugandan invasion of Tanzania in 1979, East Germany attempted to remove evidence of its involvement with these agencies. In 1973, U.S. Ambassador Thomas Patrick Melody recommended that the United States reduce its presence in Uganda. Melody described Armin's regime as racist, erratic and unpredictable, brutal, inept, bellicose, irrational, ridiculous, and militaristic. Accordingly, the United States closed its embassy in Kampala. In June 1976, Armin allowed an Air France airliner from Tel Aviv to Paris hijacked by two members of the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine a Euro External Operations and two members of the German revolutionary currency Rezellen to land at Entebbe Airport. There the hijackers were joined by three more. Soon after, 156 non-Jewish hostages who did not hold Israeli passports were released and flown to safety, while 83 Jews and Israeli citizens, as well as 20 others who refused to abandon them, continued to be held hostage. In the subsequent Israeli rescue operation, codenamed Operation Thunderbolt, on the night of 3 Euro July 4, 1976, a group of Israeli commandos were flown in from Israel and seized control of Entebbe Airport, freeing nearly all the hostages. Three hostages died during the operation and ten were wounded. Seven hijackers, about 45 Ugandan soldiers, and one Israeli soldier, Yoni Netanyahu, were killed. A fourth hostage, 75-year-old Dora Block, an elderly Jewish Englishwoman who had been taken to Mulago Hospital in Kampala before the rescue operation, was subsequently murdered in reprisal. The incident further soured Uganda's international relations, leading the United Kingdom to close its High Commission in Uganda. Uganda under Amin embarked on a large military build-up, which raised concerns in Kenya. Early in June 1975, Kenyan officials impounded a large convoy of Soviet-made arms en route to Uganda at the port of Mombasa. Tension between Uganda and Kenya reached its climax in February 1976 when Amin announced that he would investigate the possibility that parts of southern Sudan and western and central Kenya, up to within 32 kilometers of Nairobi, were historically a part of colonial Uganda. The Kenyan government responded with a stern statement that Kenya would not part with a single inch of territory. Amin backed down after the Kenyan army deployed troops and armored personnel carriers along the Kenya Euro Uganda border. Deposition and Exile By 1978, the number of Amin's supporters and close associates had shrunk significantly, and he faced increasing dissent from the populace within Uganda as the economy and infrastructure collapsed from years of neglect and abuse. After the killings of Bishop Luam and Minister Zoraima and Abofo Fumbai in 1977, several of Amin's ministers defected or fled into exile. In November 1978, after Amin's vice president, General Mustafa Adrasai, was injured in a car accident, troops loyal to him mutinied. Amin sent troops against the mutineers, some of whom had fled across the Tanzanian border. Amin accused Tanzanian President Julius Nyerere of waging war against Uganda, ordered the invasion of Tanzanian territory, and formally annexed a section of the Kedera region across the boundary. In January 1979, Nyerere mobilized the Tanzania People's Defense Force and counterattacked, joined by several groups of Ugandan exiles who had united as the Uganda National Liberation Army. Amin's army retreated steadily, and, 
Despite military help from Libya's Muammar Gaddafi, he was forced to flee into exile by helicopter on April 11, 1979, when Kampala was captured. He escaped first to Libya, where he stayed until 1980, and ultimately settled in Saudi Arabia, where the Saudi royal family allowed him sanctuary and paid him a generous subsidy in return for his staying out of politics. Amin lived for a number of years on the top two floors of the Novotel Hotel on Palestine Road in Jeddah. Brian Barron, who covered the Uganda-Euro-Tanzania war for the BBC as chief Africa correspondent, together with cameraman Mohamed Amin of Vice News in Nairobi, located Amin in 1980 and secured the first interview with him since his deposition. During interviews he gave during his exile in Saudi Arabia, Amin held that Uganda needed him and never expressed remorse for the nature of his regime. In 1989, he attempted to return to Uganda, apparently to lead an armed group organized by Colonel Yuma Oris. He reached Kinshasa, Zaire, before Zairean President Mobutu Seko forced him to return to Saudi Arabia. Death, on July 19, 2003, one of Amin's wives, Medina reported that he was in a coma and near death at the King Faisal Specialist Hospital and Research Center in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, from kidney failure. She pleaded with the Ugandan president, Yawari Musfini, to allow him to return to Uganda for the remainder of his life. Musfini replied that Amin would have to answer for his sins the moment he was brought back. Amin's family decided to disconnect life support and Amin died at the hospital in Jeddah on August 16, 2003 and was buried in Rue Cemetery in Jeddah in a simple grave without any fanfare. Family and Associates A polygamist, Idi Amin married at least five women, three of whom he divorced. He married his first and second wives, Maliamu and Kay, in 1966. The next year, he married Nora and then married Nilongo Medina in 1972. On March 26, 1974, he announced on Radio Uganda that he had divorced Maliamu, Nora and Kay. Maliamu was arrested in Tororo on the Kenyan border in April 1974 and accused of attempting to smuggle a bolt of fabric into Kenya. She later moved to London where she operates a restaurant in East London. K. Amin died under mysterious circumstances in the mid-70s and her body was found dismembered. Nora first fled to Dr. Congo in 1979 but her current whereabouts are unknown. In August 1975, during the Organization of African Unity Summit meeting in Kampala, Amin married Sarah Kaya Laba, who was famously known as Suicide Sarah. Sarah's boyfriend, whom she had been living with before she met Amin, vanished and was never heard from again. By 1993, Amin was living with the last nine of his children and a single wife, Mama Ashimura, the mother of the youngest four of his children. His last known child, daughter Iman, was born in 1992. According to the Monitor, Amin married a few months before his death in 2003. Sources differ widely on the number of children Amin fathered. Most say that he had 30 to 45. Until 2003, Taban Amin, Idi Amin's eldest son, was the leader of West Nile Bank Front, a rebel group opposed to the government of Yawari Musfini. In 2005, he was offered amnesty by Musfini, and in 2006, he was appointed Deputy Director General of the Internal Security Organization. Another of Amin's sons, Haji Ali Amin, ran for election as chairman of NJEU Town Council in 2002 but was not elected. In early 2007, the award-winning film The Last King of Scotland prompted one of his sons, Jafar Amin, to speak out in his father's defence. Jafar Amin said he was writing a book to rehabilitate his father's reputation. Jafar is the tenth of Amin's 40 official children by seven official wives. On August 3, 2007, Faisal Wanjita, one of Amin's sons, was convicted for playing a role in a murder in London. Wanjita's mother is Amin's fifth wife, Sarah Kaya Laba, a former go-go dancer, but known as Suicide Sarah, because she was a go-go dancer for the Ugandan Army's Revolutionary Suicide Mechanized Regiment Band. Among Amin's closest associates was the British-born Bob Arsels, who is considered by many to have been a malignant influence and by others as having been a moderating presence. 
Isaac Maliamungu was an instrumental affiliate and one of the more feared officers in Armin's army. Erratic behavior, self-bestowed titles, and media portrayal. Armin's egotistical behavior and mental health have been the subjects of much speculation throughout his reign and life. He was described as having a quick change and violent short temper. Being charming, happy, and charismatic one minute and then suddenly angry, violent, and brutal the next with little or no warning. Many have speculated his behavior was either the result of long-term syphilis of the brain or possibly undiagnosed and untreated bipolar disorder. As the years progressed, Armin's behavior became more erratic, unpredictable, and outspoken. After the United Kingdom broke off all diplomatic relations with his regime in 1977, Armin declared he had defeated the British and conferred on himself the decoration of CBE. His full self-bestowed title ultimately became, His Excellency, President for Life, Field Marshal El Hadi Dr. Idi Amin Dada, VC, DSO, MC, Lord of all the beasts of the earth and fishes of the seas and conqueror of the British Empire in Africa in general and Uganda in particular, in addition to his officially stated claim of being the uncrowned King of Scotland. He was not a recipient of a distinguished service order or a military cross. He conferred a doctorate of law on himself from Makerere University as well as the Victorious Cross, a medal made to emulate the British Victoria Cross. Amin became the subject of rumors and myths, including a widespread belief that he was a cannibal. Some of the unsubstantiated rumors, such as the mutilation of one of his wives, were spread and popularized by the 1980 film Rise and Fall of Idi Amin and alluded to in the film The Last King of Scotland in 2006 a movie which earned actor Forrest Whitaker a Best Actor Academy Award for his portrayal of Armin. During Armin's time in power, popular media outside of Uganda often portrayed him as an essentially comic and eccentric figure. In a 1977 assessment typical of the time, a Time magazine article described him as a killer and clown, big-hearted buffoon and strutting martinet. The comedy variety series Saturday Night Live aired four Armin sketches between 1976 and Euro 79, including one in which he was an ill-behaved housewist in exile, and another in which he was a spokesman against venereal disease. The foreign media were often criticized by Ugandan exiles and defectors for focusing on Armin's excessive tastes and self-aggrandizing eccentricities, and downplaying or excusing his murderous behavior. Other commentators even suggested that Armin had deliberately cultivated his eccentric reputation in the foreign media as an easily parodied buffoon in order to diffuse international concern over his administration of Uganda. Portrayal in media and literature, film dramatizations, Victory at Entebbe, a TV film about Operation Entebbe. Julius Harris plays Armin. Godfrey Cambridge was originally cast as Armin, but died of a heart attack on the set. Amin commented on Cambridge's death, saying that it was punishment from God. Raid on Entebbe, a film depicting the events of Operation Entebbe. Yafit Kotto portrays Amin as a charismatic, but short-tempered, political and military leader. In MIVTSA Yonatan, an Israeli film about Operation Entebbe, Jamaican-born British actor Mark Heath portrays Amin, who in this film is first angered by the Palestinian terrorists whom he later comes to support. Rise and Fall of Idi Amin, a film recreating Idi Amin's atrocities. Amin is played by Kenyan actor Joseph Olita. The Naked Gun, from the Files of Police Squad. A comedy film in which Amin, portrayed by Prince Hughes, is one of the real-life figures in the Beirut meeting where he helps plan to attack the United States at the beginning of the movie. Frank Dbin hilariously ends up injuring Armin's hand after blocking a punch with a spittoon and uses it to knock Armin out a window. Mississippi Maisler, a film depicting the resettlement of an Indian family after the expulsion of Asians from Uganda by I.D. Armin. Joseph Oliter again plays Armin in a cameo. The Last King of Scotland, a film adaptation of Giles Fodden's 1998 novel of the same name. For his portrayal of I.D. Armin, Forrest Whitaker won the Academy Award, British Academy Film Award, Broadcast Film Critics Association Award, Golden Globe Award, and Screen Actors Guild Award, thus becoming the fourth black actor to win the Oscar for Best Actor. Documentaries, 
General Idi Amin Dada, a self-portrait, directed by French filmmaker Barbet Schroeder. Idi Amin, Monster in Disguise, a television documentary directed by Greg Baker. The Man Who Ate His Archbishop's Liver. A television documentary written, produced and directed by Elizabeth C. Jones for Associated Rediffusion and Channel 4. The Man Who Stole Uganda, World in Action first broadcast April 5, 1971. Inside ID Amin's Terror Machine, World in Action first broadcast June 13, 1979. Books, State of Blood, The Inside Story of ID Amin by Henry Kiemba, The General is Up by Peter Nazareth, Ghosts of Kampala, The Rise and Fall of ID Amin by George Ivan Smith, The Last King of Scotland by Giles Fodden, ID Amin Dada, Hitler in Africa by Thomas Patrick Melody, General Amin by David Martin One Love ID Amin, the Story of Triumph Under Fire in the Midst of Suffering and Persecution in Uganda by Festo Kivenja, Impassioned for Freedom, Uganda, Struggle Against Idi Amin by Aria Kate Gare, Confessions of Idi Amin, The Chilling, Explosive Expose of Africa's Most Evil Man A Euro and His Own Words compiled by Trevor Donald, Kahawa by Donald Westlake. A thriller in which Amin is a minor character, but Amin's Uganda is portrayed in detail. Culture of the Sepulchre by Madame Jeet Singh, Music and Audio, Idi Amin, The Amazing Man Song by John Bird, Springtime in Uganda by Blaise Foley, The Collected Bulletins of Idi Amin and Further Bulletins of President Idi Amin by Alan Corrin, portraying Amin as an amiable, if murderous, buffoon in charge of a tin pot dictatorship. Alan was also responsible in part for a music really a seer a euro the collected broadcasts of Idi Amin. It was a British comedy album parodying Ugandan dictator I.D. Amin, released in 1975 on Transatlantic Records. It was performed by John Bird and written by Alan Corrin, based on columns he wrote for Punch magazine. Notes, or many sources, like Encyclopedia Britannica, N. Carter and the Columbia Encyclopedia, hold that Amin was born in Kaboko or Kampalasi. 1925 and that the exact date of his birth is unknown. Researcher Fred Guideco claimed that Armin was born on May 17, 1928, but that is disputed. The only certainty is that Armin was born sometime during the mid-1920s. Bar according to Henry Kimmer and the African Studies Review, Idi Armin had 34 children. Some sources say Armin claimed to have fathered 32 children. A report in the Monitor says he was survived by 45 children, while another in the BBC gives the figure of 54. Footnotes References African Studies Review 25 Euro 26 University of California, 1982 A. Avergan, Tony. Martha Honey. War in Uganda, The Legacy of I.D. Armin. Westport, Connecticut, Lawrence Hill and Company. Publishers. ISBN A 0 88208 136 5 Cotton, Fran The Book of Rugby Disasters and Bizarre Records. Compiled by Chris Reese. London. Century Publishing. ISBN 0 7126 3 Decalo, Samuel. Psychoses of Power, African Personal Dictatorships. Boulder, Colorado, Westview Press. ISBN A 0 8133 7617-3A, Gwyn, David. I.D. Amin, Death Light of Africa. Boston, Little, Brown and Company. ISBN A 0 316 33230 5 Kiemba, Henry. A State of Blood, The Inside Story of I.D. Amin. New York, Ace Books. ISBN 0 441 78524 4. Lloyd, Lorna. Diplomacy with a Difference, The Commonwealth Office of High Commissioner, 1880 Euro 2006. University of Michigan, Martinus Nijoff. ISBN A 90 04 15497 3. Melody, Thomas P. Margaret B. Melody. I.D. Amin Dada, Hitler in Africa. Kansas City, Shidandrews and McMeal. 
ISBN A0-8362-0783-1A, Orizio, Ricardo. Talk of the Devil, Encounters with Seven Dictators. Walker and Company. ISBN A0 436 20999 3. A. Palmowski, Jan Dictionary of Contemporary World History, from 1900 to the Present Day. Oxford University Press. ISBN A0 19 860539 0. A. External links. The Idea Mean One New, Brian Barron, BBC, August 16, 2003. Includes a video of Brian Barron interviewing Idi Amin in exile in 1980. The Atlantic a Euro April 1, 2001 memo and Quincy L.S. The series, General Idi Amin Dada, a self-portrait on Google videos, idamanada.com, a website devoted to Idi Amin's legacy created by his son Jafar Amin, Idi Amin at the Internet Movie Database.